together. Can you hear the music? And if so, is it too loud? Not sure I should even use it. Hey everybody. Hey Jay. Pushing my coffee. Can you guys hear the music? I have some music on my cell, and I'm not sure if it's even worth trying or not. There's probably a fancier way to do it, but I don't know. <laughs> to see you. Okay, great. Thanks, Heather. Oh, and here's Noodles. <laughs> I get excited. She gets excited. Noodles says hi. Hi. Hello, everybody. Yay. Okay, great. Thanks, Jay. Oh, Noodles was doing a perfect uh, upward facing dog earlier today. I wish I'd gotten a uh, picture of it. So, I'm just going to wait probably till about 9, 17 or 18 <laughs> to start officially. So um, welcome, welcome everybody. I'm going to say this a couple different times. But, so this is a pretty moderate class. We don't do anything crazy. We hopefully will get a lot of good stretching and practice deep breathing, which we all need these days. And um we'll do uh, you know some standing things um maybe get our heart rate up a little bit but um not a whole lot and do some balance and then we'll come back down to the floor and um, at the very end the best part the reward is that you get to lay down on your mat or your carpet or wherever you are and just soak it in for a little bit so um We'll do that at the very end, and then we'll finish. So, Noodles is super happy to be here with me. She, I'm hoping that she mostly stays off the mat. But it's exciting when there's something different happening in the house, as you know. So, oh, so glad you could hear. So glad you're here. Hey, Rebecca. Hello. Hello, everybody. Noodles. Let me get started, please. Okay. Oh. She's wondering why we haven't had our walk yet. I kind of slept in in the rain, so we'll have a walk afterwards. So welcome, everybody. Anybody who's new, hi. Great to see you guys. All right. Um, I'm just do my little spiel one more time. So welcome. This is a moderate class. We're not going to do anything crazy. We're not going to go upside down. We, downward facing dog is the most upside down we do. So don't worry about that. And um, even if that's something that doesn't work for you, there's a modification for down dog. We are going to be um, towards the beginning. We'll be on hands and knees for a little bit, but I will give you some modifications for that if being on either your wrists or your knees or both is not great for you, so not to worry about that. All right. Okay, great. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and do my spiel here a little closer and then get back on the mat. So um, first of all, the most important thing about this class or any other class is that you pay attention to what works for you. So it doesn't matter what I'm doing or what you think you're supposed to be doing, really. It matters what feels right to you. So if there's anything we move through that you feel like, yeah, that is not, that does not feel right on my hip or my ankle or my shoulder or any of those things, you just ease off of that. The same is true kind of for the other spectrum, end of the spectrum, which is if you want to do something a little more intense, a little more challenging version than what I'm 
doing, that's also great, obviously. So um, I also like to tell, especially first time students, if you feel like, you know what, I, I'm ready to just relax. You can lay back on your mat and fall asleep. That's fine with me. So this is your time to do what you want to. Um, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. We focus really on two things in the classes that I teach. First and foremost, we focus on our breath um, because that is really the core of yoga. Yoga is not about, like I said in a post, not about turning into a pretzel. It's not about being able to stand on your head. It's not about standing on a rock, doing dancer pose. Uh, so you can post it on Instagram, which is all fine to do. All of that's fine. I have nothing against that. But yoga is really about using our breath to help connect our body and our mind, um, our spirit, so that we can focus on right now, focus on what there is to be focusing on, rather than all of the stuff that goes on in our heads all the time. So um, the other thing really is alignment. So you hear me talk a lot about where to place body parts in space, and that's because I really want to make sure that we're not stressing our joints, we're stressing our muscles, but don't want to be injuring our joints, right? So. Um, yeah, just have fun. Breathing is the most important thing. Uh, you don't need to worry about placing your, your, your feet or your hands perfectly. There's no such thing. I know when I first started practicing yoga, that was intimidating to me because it felt like the teachers would always just be like, perfectly placed every time and, and like never moving or wiggling or adjusting. And, you know, we all have to wiggle and adjust, so don't worry about that. All right, I'm going to go back onto my mat. All right, so we are going to get started seated. So we want to be grounded into the mat with our, our bony parts of our hips, our, our pelvis at the back. So those bony parts of your hips, you want to be able to feel them really connecting down into the mat. So most of us have some fleshy bits back there that we can move so that we can really feel connected into the mat. And the reason we want to have that position for our hips is so that our spine can be nice and straight so that our lungs have lots of room to breathe. So it's really all in service of the lungs. Sometimes first thing in the morning we can be a little stiff. Um, we want to be able to sit here without a lot of strain, a lot of work to try and keep ourselves in a straight back position. So one thing you can do is just roll up your mat and sit on it and have those bony parts of your pelvis go right in front and it just kind of automatically puts your pelvis in a position that allows your back to relax so that it can sit up straight rather than having to strain to sit up straight. You can try that. So once we're here, all settled into our, our mat, feel free to here to have your eyes open or closed. I'm going to close mine because that's what I prefer to do. We're going to have some side entertainment here. Hi. No, no. If I ignore her, that usually works. So I'm going to close my eyes. Feel free to have your eyes open. We want to be in that position where our spine is nice and straight. The neck is in line with the spine. The crown of the head is reaching up to the sky. And we're just going to take a few breaths together, just normal, easy breaths, just to check in with the body. How are things feeling? What sensations are you feeling this morning? Are there any places that are especially tight or tense? Maybe someplace that's tender. Let's make sure that we're gentle with those places this morning as we move through our practice together. Give it lots of room, lots of space. And noticing where you feel the breath the most this morning. Is it in your sinuses, maybe the back of the throat? in your lungs, near your heart, where do you feel it most? Beginning now to move into our slow, rhythmic breath. So with each inhale, really lift the heart, push the belly button out away from the spine, reach the rib cage out to each side, so Really inhaling fully, and then with each exhale, slowly squeezing the air back out, drawing the belly button back to the spine, 
Feeling the ribcage snug up against the lungs, allowing the heart to soften, perhaps the shoulders to soften down with our exhales. Deep, full inhale and a slow, full exhale. Imagining that as we are inhaling, we're making more room for what's possible. Some new understanding, perhaps. Some new opportunity. And as we exhale, practicing letting go of those things which no longer serve us. Letting go, practicing the letting go of things which we know we're attached to, but perhaps we're ready to let go. Maybe it's a worry, an upset, a judgment. Practicing letting it go with our breath, knowing that it's always a practice. And if your eyes are closed, perhaps gently blinking them back open. And we're going to move through some gentle neck stretches first. So with a big inhale, lift the heart, lift the crown of the head up to the sky. As we exhale, turn to the right. To the right. I'm going to mirror you, by the way. I forgot. <laughs> On an inhale, come back forward. Lift the heart. And exhale, turn towards the left. Inhale, come back forward. Exhale, gently let your right ear drop towards your right shoulder, and then really draw the right shoulder blade down the back, continuing to lift the heart, enjoying the stretch. On an inhale, lift back up. And exhale, let your left ear drop towards the left shoulder, drawing both shoulder blades down the back. And then on and inhale, lift straight back up. Exhale, very gently let your chin drop towards your chest without forcing it down. Just let your chin drop as far as feels like a pleasant amount of stretch for you this morning. On your next inhale, lift your right ear up to the sky. So we're just turning our face towards the right. The ear is reaching up to the sky. You can stay right here, or if you want a little extra stretch, you can very gently move your head around here to get some more stretch in some of those neck muscles, but be very, very gentle. And then on your next exhale, release your face straight back down. Inhale, lift the left ear up to the sky. Again, you can stay put or very gently move your head, nice and slow. And then on and exhale, release your face straight back down. Inhale, slowly lift the head, roll the shoulders all the way up to the ears, and then stretch them down the back. All right, let's do some side stretches. So reach your left fingers out to the side. So just the fingertips on the floor or the mat. With an inhale, reach the right hand straight up to the sky. Really stretch, stretch, stretch. And then exhale, flatten that left palm, strong left arm reaching for that place where the wall meets the ceiling. So we're not trying to go sideways here so much. We're really just trying to have a nice arch. Reaching through the fingertips, strong left arm. And then on your next exhale, allow the left elbow to bend as much as you like. Keep reaching for that high corner. It's like the left hand and the right hip are resisting each other. So you want to keep both hips solidly into the mat. On an inhale, reach straight back up. And exhale, release the right fingertips down to the floor. Inhale, the left hand straight up, really stretch again. And exhale, flat right hand, strong right arm, reaching up for that opposite corner where the ball meets the ceiling. On your next exhale, allow the right elbow to bend as much as you like. Keep reaching for that corner. Really press the left hip down into the mat. Great. On an inhale, lift straight back up. And exhale, release. Good job. Extend your legs out front. Give them a little bounce. And then we're going to bring the soles of the feet together. 
but out away from our hips. So we're not bringing them in close. We want them out away from the hips, about an arm's length away for the heels. All right, staying up on those sits bones. Hands in front of the hips. We wanna, we're gonna fold over here. We really wanna do that with a nice straight back. So first of all, stretch the shoulder blades down the back and then squeeze them together like there's a bright shiny penny right there between the shoulder blades we're trying to keep right there. Take a big inhale, lift the heart. As we exhale, begin to walk the fingers forward. Keep squeezing the shoulder blades together so we've got a nice straight back. Try and keep that back straight as long as you can. And then when you're ready, go ahead and let your back curve over, let your head relax. Reach your hands out. But again, you wanna stay in that place where it feels like a lovely stretch for you. You don't wanna be forcing or bouncing yourself down. Maybe up a little higher and that is just fine. You wanna stay where you can breathe. Yoga is all about trying to find that lovely place between effort and ease when they come together. So this is a great place to practice that. Keeping your head and torso relaxed. Slowly walk your hands over towards the left. You wanna keep your hands supported. So if you're up a little higher, again, that's no problem. We just wanna make sure the hands are on the floor or on your leg. We just don't want them hanging out in the air because that can strain the low back. So let those hands be supported somewhere. Slowly walk hands back to center, and then walk the hands over towards the right. Remember your slow, steady breath, more important than anything else. Slowly walking hands back to center, and then we're going to walk our hands back. As we do that, squeeze that shiny penny between your shoulder blades. You're trying to come up with a nice straight back. Coming all the way back up, roll the shoulders up again, stretch them down, extend the legs, get one back. All right, we're gonna come up on the hands and knees for a few poses. So if being on your hands and or knees is not a great idea for you, um, let me show you a couple of modifications. So we're gonna come into um, position, all fours position here in a bit for um, cow cat. If that's not workable for you to be on your knees and wrists, no problem. Stay on your buttons, hold on to the upper shins, roll the shoulders back. And then on an inhale, you'll lift the heart to arch the back, looking just a little bit up to the sky. And then on an exhale, curve the back like a cat. So that's our cow cat from on the floor. If you want to join our hands and knees, or any version of hands and knees, I'll show you here. So we want to stack our joints. So we don't want to have our hands out in front of us or too close back to our knees. We really want to stack the joints so that our wrists are underneath our shoulders, our knees are underneath our hips. If being on flat hands works for you, we want to have our fingers spread wide, as wide apart as you can get them. That center finger pointing basically straight to the top of the mat, but the insides of the elbows facing more towards each other than the front of the mat. So some of us are really flexible and tend to want to curve our, our insides of our elbows forward. We really don't want to do that because that can really torque that elbow joint. So we want the insides of the elbows facing each other. All right. And if you want to be on knees, if knees are okay, but the wrists not so much, feel free to come up to fists or also down to forearms with elbows underneath the shoulders. All right. For any of these that we're about to do. All right. It's nice and stacked here. Keeping our gaze down at the mat, moving through some cow cat. With an inhale, let the belly drop, lift the tailbone, lift the heart, look straight forward. As we exhale, tuck the tail long, pull the belly button up, reach the crown of the head down. So inhale up to our old sway back cow. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, arch the back into cat. Moving through a few of these, nice and slow, using your breath. Again, doing the seated version if that's better for you. Just enjoying that stretch of the spine. Moving through our last cow cat and coming back to a flat back or straight back if you're seated. So I'm going to show from this position first and then I'll show the seated position. So we're going to move through um, the spinal balance, keeping our gaze straight down at the mat. With an inhale, reach your right hand straight forward, your left heel straight back. 
Now, if we're in this position, we're going to try not to lift that leg up to the sky. We're really just trying to reach it straight back. Really stretch the fingertips forward, the heel back. For those of us who are seated, we can do the same basic thing. Right? Push through your left heel, reach through the fingertips. On an exhale, come back to your version of all fours, whatever that is. On our next inhale, reach the left hand straight forward or up. The right heel straight back or straight forward. Really stretch through the shoulder, try to stretch through the hip. Slow down your breath. And on an exhale, come back to all fours. Great job. All right. For those of us here, Let's actually all join each other in child's pose, unless you just can't on your knees, and that's just fine. Just stay in that seated position and relax. Bring the hips back to the heels. Stretch the hands far out in front of us if we're in child's pose. We're going to keep our hands just as wide as the shoulders and no wider, but we also don't want them right next to each other. So hands are just as wide as the shoulders. All right, we're going to move through some yogi push-ups. Those of you who are seated, hang on a sec, I'll be right with you. From here, with our yogi push-ups, with an inhale, lift the shoulders, bring them all the way forward so they're over the wrists. So we don't want to be back here. You want shoulders right over the wrists. So we're really going to tuck the tailbone. So we don't want to come down with the sway back here. We want to tuck that tailbone under, roll the shoulders down away from the ears. As we exhale, reach the heart forward, press the elbows into the side of the body. Keep the hips up off the floor. With an inhale, lift it back up, and exhale, come back into child's pose. So I'm going to show that one more time, and then I'm coming to you guys who might be seated. Inhale, come forward, shoulders over the wrist, tailbone tucked. Exhale, reach the heart forward, keep the hips off the mat. Inhale, lift it back up, and exhale back. So move through three more of those for me. Those of you who are seated, we're just going to do a tricep dip. You can do this on flat hands or fists. All right. Hands back behind a bit. And just allow your back to go towards the floor. In the up. We're going to keep the neck nice and straight here. We're going to reach back with the neck. And then head up forward. All right. Everybody come together in child's pose. Right? Even those of you who might not be on your knees for long, we won't be here for, for very long. We're going to come into a dolphin. So lift the hips and now bring the elbows, the forearms down onto the mat, elbows underneath the shoulders. We're going to interlace our fingers and that bottom pinky tucks all the way under. Look back at your toes. We want to bring our toes as wide as the joints of our hips, maybe a little wider. Tuck them as far forward as you can. Take a big inhale. As we exhale, let the weight come onto the forearms, push away, and lift the hips up into dolphin. Now your heels are probably not going to be anywhere close to the mat. That is just fine. You can see mine or not. Really press away with the forearms. Here we want to stretch our shoulder blades away from each other. So earlier we were squeezing them together. Now we want to stretch them away. That's to get all of those muscles around the shoulder, shoulder blade, the top of the arm, really engaged and strong. Lift the kneecaps up towards the, the hips to help try and let those muscles on the back of the legs relax a bit. You can rest your knees if you need to. It's a great way to get some upper body strength with no pressure on your wrists. On our next exhale, release the knees to the mat. We're going to come up into full downward facing dog, unless you don't want to be on your wrist, which is fine. Come right back into dolphin. If you're joining us in down dog, make sure your shirt's down. <laughs> We're going to have our hands flat on the mat here, and hands out just a little bit in front of our shoulders, just a bit. Fingers still spread wide. Toes are still tucked. Take another big inhale. As we exhale, push the floor away, lift the knees and the hips up again into downward facing dog. I almost always have to adjust a little bit in down dog. This is another one of those places where some people just like whoop, pop right up and they just stay still. I have to wiggle and get adjusted. Down dog is, I think, one of the more challenging poses and it takes a while. This is it did me. 
to get comfortable in it. So by a while, I did like weeks, months. So if this doesn't feel good, you're totally normal. All right, again, heels may or may not be on the floor. Don't force them down. Stretch the shoulder blades away from each other again. Lift the kneecaps. Pull that belly button back to the spine and then up towards the heart. All right, look at your hands. Walk forward to meet your hands into a forward fold. I'm going to bring our feet, our heels just as wide as the joints of the hips. The knees are a little bit bent. Push down through the feet, reach the hands out to the side, stretch the fingertips away from each other. On an inhale, push through the feet, reach through the fingertips, slowly come all the way up. Bring the hands together above the head and then down to heart center. And we're just going to take a couple of breaths to get used to being upright again. Sometimes being upside down for a bit can make folks a little dizzy. So we want to be nice and calm here about that. All right, we're going to move through some hip circles. So with your hands on your hips, feet just as wide as the joints of the hips. So when I say hips distance apart, I really mean just as wide as the joints of the hips, not as wide as this soft outside part, but right underneath the joints. Some of us have more soft outside parts. All right, hands on the hips. We're going to circle our hips. We're going to go both directions, so it doesn't matter which way you start. Take an inhale and exhale, hips to the back and come forward. We're really trying to move the whole hip structure. So try to keep your head fairly steady. You see those videos of the chickens where their head stays in one place and their body moves? Like that. And now we're just going to go the other direction. Inhale and exhale. So really try to think about moving the hips, not just kind of bending over one way or the other at your waist, but moving those hips. All right, coming back to our standing position. We're going to go through some moonflowers and sunflowers to work on our legs a little bit here. So I'm going to find a squat position where our legs are at least as wide as the shoulders, maybe a little wider. This is where it's really important to pay attention to what feels right to you and not exactly what I'm doing because we all have different anatomy that makes uh, certain poses more challenging or more easy for us. So. For me, I need to have my heels a little wider and my toes pointed out. So we do want our toes to be out a little bit um, at an angle. But your angle might be a little more um, acute than mine. Is that the right, is that the right acute, right? Um, I have to have my toes out um, at more of a, of a drastic angle for my hips and my knees to get comfortable. So what we want is when we squat here just a bit, we want the hips and the knees comfortable, and most importantly, we want our knees facing the same direction as the toes. So when we squat, the knees are going right towards the toes. We just don't want feet one direction and knees another, all right? We've been through some moonflowers and sunflowers. With an inhale, sweep up high and wide, really stretch through the fingertips, and as we exhale, squat, press the elbows into the ribs. Push through the feet to inhale up. And exhale down. Really press the elbows in like you're trying to get into your rib cage. You can also, if you like, work your elbows back behind the back like they're trying to reach each other. That'll give you a sense of the kind of stretch we're looking for there. Last moonflower. We're going to switch to sunflower, which is arms up high overhead and crossing. As we exhale, we're going to squat again, this time hinge at the hips to scoop to the floor, push to the feet, inhale, come back up. Here we really want to pay attention to keeping our back straight. So we want to concern ourselves more about keeping the spine straight than how far we go over. So we don't want to curve our back in order to get lower. We really want to keep that back nice and straight. One more sunflower. And then as we come down here, we're going to pause into sun. Good time to adjust your feet if you need to, to make sure your knees are happy. Here you want to tuck the tailbone. So it's easy here to really sway the back, to carry the weight here. We want to tuck the tailbone under so the weight goes here. Shoulders down the back. Inhale, come back up. I'm going to come down to just kind of a high squat for some side stretches. 
So your left hand over to your right leg. Inhale, the right hand straight up. As we exhale, hinge sideways. So really trying to remember to keep the tailbone tucked. The knees are pressing back, the heart is lifted. If having your arm right over your ear is not comfortable for your shoulder, no problem, you can just bring it out in front. Or have it at your side, whatever works best for you. Inhale, come back up. And back down to that high squat. All right, your right hand over to your left leg. Inhale, the left hand straight up. Exhale, hinge over. Again, tailbone tucked, knees pressing back, heart lifted. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, come back down to that squat for just a bit. All right, coming back up. We're going to move our feet now. And actually, before I do that, if you have a strap or a scarf or a belt or a stretchy band, we can use that for this next exercise. It really can be anything that's long-ish and flexible. And if you don't have one, that is fine. You can literally just use your shirt. I'll show you that too. All right, so now keeping our legs wider apart, but now we want to pivot our feet so that our heels are a little bit wider than our toes, kind of pigeon toe, right? We're gonna start, we're just gonna do a shoulder stretch. So if you have a strap or a belt or a scarf, place it over your left hand, your left palm, and then bring it back behind. Reach back with your right, you wanna stretch that shoulder, and hold onto it. Again, if you don't have a strap, no problem. You can just hold on to the top of your shirt and the bottom of your shirt. And you may be someone whose hands just clasp right away, and that's fine too. All right. We're going to be lifting our kneecaps up. Try and work your hands as close together as is a comfortable amount of stretch for your elbows. Here, we're gonna be folding over again, but what we wanna pay attention to is that we don't press on our neck or our head as we do that. So we really wanna keep our neck in a nice straight line, more important, again, than how far over we're folding. It's keeping that neck nice and straight. Take a big inhale, lift the heart, lift the kneecaps. As we exhale, hinge over to a flat back. We might be coming down as low as parallel to the floor. We might be up here a little bit, and that's just fine. The straightness of the spine is more important, all right? Here you might want to work your hands a little closer or at least stretch the elbows away from each other. Keep the kneecaps lifted and on your next exhale, allow the back to relax. Allow your head to reach down. Slow breath. Let the knees bend a lot and on an inhale, slowly lift the torso back up to standing. Great job, relax that, roll your shoulders. All right, other side. So now the strap, if you have one, is in your right hand. Bring it back behind, reach back with the left. Work your hands towards each other, lifting the kneecaps. Take a big inhale, exhale, hinge over with a straight back, remembering not to put any pressure on your neck or your head. You may be parallel with the floor, you may not be. That's just fine. Kneecaps are still lifted. And then on an exhale, allow the torso to relax again, the head to reach down towards the mat. Great, let the knees bend, and slowly on an inhale, come all the way back up. <sighs> Releasing that strap onto the floor, roll the shoulders. Okay, great, we're gonna move into some warrior poses. I know when I first started doing yoga, I remember thinking, I thought it was all peace and love, why are there warrior positions? <laughs> and the yogis from long, long ago uh, developed these poses just by looking around the world. So, you know, cow, cat, tree, which we'll do here in a bit. Warriors, right? Every community needs their warriors, and we have a lot of Amazing warriors in this community of all kinds, right? So we're grateful for them. All right, starting in warrior one. I'm gonna face you so you can see. Again, 
We want our feet right now to be hips distance apart. What we're going to do is keep our right foot where it is at the top of the mat and step the left foot straight back. All right. So the right toes are facing straight forward. The left foot is stepped back. The left toes are pointing at about a 45 degree angle or so towards the front of the mat. That's going to depend on what's best for your ankle and your knee, but we don't want our foot to come at 90 or reverse because that will really torque your knee, your hip, your ankle, we don't want that. All right, the right knee is over the ankle. The hips and the shoulders are facing straight to the front of the mat. Shoulder blades are down the back. Hands can come to heart center. Really push down through both feet. And here's another place for that effort and ease. We want to find that spot. Feel free to begin to wiggle and adjust and work on what's working here for you. If you feel like, you know what, there's not much happening here, I don't really feel anything, you want to step that foot back. Because what we want to feel is some pleasant amount of stretch on that back hip. Some work in our buns, all right? But if it feels like too much, bring that foot a little closer, all right? You want to feel like it takes some work to stay in this pose. It's basically a balanced pose, really. All right, with an inhale, Reach the hands up to the sky, and as we exhale, stretch the shoulder blades down the back. Bring the hands back to heart center, and step forward back to the top of the mat. Now the left foot's going to stay where it is, and the right foot steps back. Right. See? No such thing as perfect, that's for sure. So the left toes are pointing straight to the front of the mat. Right heel is back. Left knee is directly over the ankle. Finding that place where you feel some good stretch, some effort to try and stay here, but there's no pain. You never want to feel pain. With an inhale, reach the hands up to the sky, and exhale, draw the shoulder blades down the back. Slow, steady breath, more important than anything else. If handing your hands up doesn't work for your shoulders, you can bring them right back to heart center or at your waist. Pushing down through both feet, lifting the heart, lifting the fingertips, stretching the shoulder blades down. Bring the hands to heart center, and we'll step forward again to the top of our mat. We're going to do just a little bit of warrior two and come into triangle. All right, so I like to use, if you have a mat, I really like to use the edge of the mat to help me with alignment. So I'm going to put my, I'm putting my left foot forward, <laughs> right foot forward. You put your right foot forward. Right toes pointing straight to the top of the mat, but the outside of the right foot is on that outside of the right edge of the mat. And then the left heel comes back onto that same Long edge back here. All right, right toes are uh, sorry. Left toes are pointing about 45 degrees forward again, and that right knee comes directly over the ankle. Now the hips and the shoulders are facing that other long edge of the mat, or in this case, your computer, your phone. Reaching the hands out in opposite directions, stretching the shoulder blades down the back, really stretching through the fingertips. We're going to turn to look just past those front fingertips. Again, this is a place where you want to find that effort and ease, balance. You want to feel like there's a lot of work to keep you here, but you can do it. You can breathe with that slow, steady breath. Moving to reverse forward, so relax the back hand. The front palm turns up with an inhale, reach it straight up to the sky. Here, if you like, you can look up. If that feels all right on your neck, you can even reach back, but you want to keep that front knee directly over the ankle. With an inhale, come back to warrior two, and we'll reach to side angle. Reach the front hand forward, rest it on the leg. Inhale, reach that left hand up to the sky. Again, you can look up if you like, if that works for your neck, but you don't have to. You can look straight forward or even down towards the floor. 
moving from here into triangle. We're gonna be straightening our front knee, but we don't wanna let it lock. We never wanna lock that knee joint. So there's a tiny little bend there, really using the muscles to keep our legs strong, pulling all the muscles from the feet and both legs up towards the hips. If you wanna go a little further in triangle, that's fine, but we really wanna focus on keeping our spine straight. As we lower down, Imagine that the upper part of the rib cage is reaching up. That will help you keep your spine straight. Really reach that top hand, come all the way back up, and we're just gonna switch sides. So now the left foot is pointing that other direction. The right toes are pointing towards the other end of the mat at about a 45 degree angle. Left knee's over the ankle. Hips and shoulders now, still facing forward. Reach the fingertips up, shoulder blades down the back, turning to look just past our front fingertips. Slow, steady breath. Reverse for you. Relax the back hand. The front palm turns up and in. Now reach it straight up to the sky. Really reach up to the top hand. Come back to warrior two. And side angle. Reaching forward with that front hand. Resting it on the leg. Inhale the right hand up to the sky. And then moving from here right into triangle, beginning to straighten our front knee without letting it lock. Really pull all the muscles from both feet up towards the hips. And if you want to lower down, that's fine. Think about bringing that hand to the outside of your front leg. Really working on keeping the back straight. What we want to avoid, a lot of folks do, is curving over to try and get our hand to the floor. And hand to the floor is not the point of triangle. Reaching out through each finger, each toe, that is the point. Reaching up with that top hand to lift us, come back up. We're gonna walk our feet towards each other for some balance. All right, we're gonna do tree and then another little bit of hold as well. So, it's okay. We want to come over first onto our right foot. So bring your weight, but also your strength over onto your right leg. Again, we don't want to stand with a locked knee joint. There's a tiny little bend there in our knee. We want to find a focal point. So try to only listen to me and gaze at something else because I'm a terrible focal point because I wobble when I'm in tree. <sighs> so something on the floor or the wall in front of you that you can gaze at. We're going to kickstand our left foot. For some of us, we might want to stay right here because the most important thing, again, is breath. Slow, steady breath. Tiny bend in that standing leg. If you want to bring your foot up, that's great. Make sure that your heel finds a muscle, so above or below your knee, right? We don't want to push our heel into our knee joint. You can stay here, or if you like, you can raise the branches up. And your branches can be any position you would like them to be. You can also keep your hands right here, just as you wish. Slow down your breath. All right, try to keep that foot lifted. Bring the knee forward. Flex the foot. Lift it. Hold on to the knee. Slow breath. And really sit down. Great job. All right, other side. Coming onto your left leg, strong leg, tiny little bend in the knee, kickstanding the right foot, moving up as you like. Remember to find your breath, slow, steady breath. Staying here or raising up some branches if you like. And 
then bringing the knee forward, flexing the foot, lifting it, hold on to it. Release it down. Excellent job. Excellent job. Inhale, reach the hands all the way up, relax your belly. Exhale, tighten the belly, reach to the left. Inhale, all the way up, relax your belly. Exhale, tighten, reach to the right. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, forward fold. As we fold, lead with the heart. Let the knees be bent. Sweep the hands down to the floor. Really let your knees bend a lot here. We want our legs and our glutes to do the work, not our low back. Your hands can be on the floor, on your legs. You can rest your elbows on your legs. You can hang on to your elbows. It's as you wish. Very gently move your head side to side like no. And then very gently nod, yes. Relax your head completely. Release the hands down to the floor. Step back to a relaxed child's pose, still connecting with our slow breath. So here our knees can be a little wider if that feels good. And it helps us relax down. If your head does not just pop down to the floor, to the mat, please, please support it with your fists or your hands. We don't want there to be any stress in our neck right now. So find a way to support your head. Slow, steady breath. Let's all bring our palms directly underneath our shoulders and slowly sit back up. And then come on to our hips. Reach the legs straight out in front. And we're just going to do a little stretching in the legs. So pull the toes toward you and then point them. One more time. All right. Make sure there's plenty of room to lay down. Hold on to your knees. Give them a squeeze and slowly roll the arm onto the floor, nice and slow. And when you get down, roll side to side or front to back if that feels good. <sighs> All right, hands onto the floor, push the soles of the feet <laughs> straight up to the sky. We're going to keep pushing through both heels and then slowly lower one leg all the way down to the mat. Really push through both heels as you do that. And when the first leg gets down, slowly lower the right. Really keep pushing through both heels. And then full body stretch. Reach the hands back behind, point the toes, reaching through the fingertips. And then relax as that, moving into ah, our relaxation. So you want to find a relaxation place that works for you. For some people, legs on the mat, feet just rolling open, feels great. For others, we might want to bring our feet back up onto the mat, out to the side, so that our knees can rest against each other. For others of us, it might feel nice to have more of a stretch so we can bring the soles of the feet together. It's as you wish. Finding that place that works for you, allowing your eyes to close, allowing the muscles around the eyes and the cheekbones to relax, around the jawline, allowing the tongue to relax from the roof of the mouth. And then the muscles of the shoulders soften and relax down into the mat. The muscles of the hips growing heavy, melting down into the mat. All the muscles from the shoulders down to the elbows, the wrists, the fingertips, letting go. The muscles from the hips, down the legs, through the knees, the ankles, the toes, letting go. Mm -hmm. 
finding gratitude for everything our amazing bodies can move us through in an hour, in a day, in a week, in a year. Making space for any emotions that might come up for us during our relaxation. Knowing that those thoughts that are there, we can practice letting them go. And then beginning to gently bring ourselves back, wiggling our toes or fingers. And then as we're ready, gently turning onto one side and curling up for a few more breaths of relaxation, helping our bodies to transition before we sit up. And then nice and slow, very carefully, making our way back up to a comfortable seated position. Thank you all so much for being here. It's so much fun for me to get to teach again. I miss you all. I look forward to when we can be together in person again. This is what I say at the end of all my classes. You're welcome to say the last word back to me or not. It's as you wish. That which is good and light in me sees and honors that which is good and light in you. Namaste. Have a wonderful rest of your day.